The victim was identified as Hu Zen, a primary school teacher in the city of... Due to various wounds on the body, they were delivered in two time, two intervals of time. We were led to believe that the victim was attacked twice, second time resulting in his death. The suspect has been arrested and is currently being transported to the Central Community Police Station where he is being questioned. Um, his physical and mental state is, well, assessed. Over. Okay. It is stated that in your papers that you have some issues with your relatives. Is that correct, Mr. Song? Yes. We believe that you were the one to attack the victim around 2205 that evening, right behind the Daily's convenience store. Am I wrong? No. The detective nodded and wrote something down in his notebook. The area behind the store is a dead end with no light. The passage is obstructed by two dumpsters. Perfect place for an assault, if you ask me. Why did you do it? Answer the question. I saw him pulling a little girl toward the dumpsters. I had a feeling something wasn't right. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty suspicious. Detective to Ping tapped the tip of his ball pen against his notebook. A little girl, you say? What's a little girl doing after 10 p.m. near a convenience store? I don't know. Let me tell you, Mr. Song, nothing. Because there was no such person there. We have the entire footage from the store security camera. It monitors the inside and outside. If a girl really was there at that hour, the camera would have caught her. It didn't. And that's impossible. I saw. Suppose I believe you and there was really a child. What did you see exactly? Did Mr. Hugh drag her behind the dumpsters where his body was found? No. I intervened before you had a chance to. So you couldn't be sure that his attention was what you thought it was. What well, could have it been? What else did what it looked like? Mr. Hugh was a school teacher with 20 years of experience, Mr. Song. He was well respected and loved in his neighborhood. It doesn't mean that he can't do something crazy as assaulting a child. That testimonies were several family members whose children were under Mr. Hugh's care. No one reported anything. Anything. That could suggest Mr. Hugh had improper intentions towards his wards. That was precisely what we expected, of course. But giving you the benefit of the doubt, we had to investigate even the most incredulous possibility. Detective Ping frowned, his fingers squeezing the ball pin with crushing strength. He leaned in. He was a man filled with a sense of duty, passion, and charity. Something the likes that you could never understand. Sounds like you're biased, but okay. Mr. Hugh lived in a place with his neighbors. Loved by his students, highly praised by a local priest as an active and dedicated parishioner. He would always find time to spread the word of God and help those in need. What does religion have to do with this? You beat him up in that dark alley, Mr. Song. Beat him up really badly, even though the man did nothing to you. Mm, I was like, nah, you gotta get me a lawyer or something, because you already sound biased. It doesn't matter what I say, you are so deeply, I don't know, just biased for this man in that man's favor. What I don't understand is, why did you come back to kill him? Why not leave things as they were after you had your share of mindless violence? Do you understand why you're here, Mr. Song? No. You are here because we believe in change. We believe that deep inside, what you did was dedicated. Uh, well, y'all could try and pause to read it, I, apparently.
I'm definitely going to put a warning on this video for the, the flash in just in case. Um, anyone watches this, because... That's a lot. It's like a movie, almost. Mr. Song? Mr. Song, I am speaking to you. A little distracted, I see. That's quite fine. Many experience a certain dose of uneasiness when they are finished. Well, not freshly, freshly admitted, not finished. Do you understand why you are here, Mr. Song? Tap, tap. No? The pen stops. You are here because we believe in change. You believe that deep inside what you did was did it dictated by something that could have been contained. I didn't do it. But every change begins with awareness. If we do not face what we did, if we cannot admit to our own deeds, how can we change? How can we begin to improve? I hit the guy, that's true. Hell, he deserved it. I would have done it all over again if I had to. Many times it took for that lesson to sink in. Unless it could not be taught to those who departed from this world, Mr. Song. And you made sure that Mr. Hugh did. Were you listening to me at all, Director? I didn't. I saw the police reports, Mr. Song. I read through them several times. I believe that you believe what you testified to be true. I do not question that. It must have sickened you to think that Mr. Hugh was a little girl. Most of us would react the same way. Want to protect an innocent soul. It's a natural reaction. Unfortunately, your judgment is colored by your unfortunate circumstances, Mr. Song. And we are here to make it better. The first step is to understand that. Now where were we? Ah yes, let's talk about the rules that we'll need to you to follow from now on. Shall we? Hmm. When Kai stepped out of the medical director's office after his very first briefing, he already felt mentally exhausted. It started dawning on him slowly, just what kind of place it was. And even though he didn't know what he was expecting prior to getting admitted, it still somehow took him by surprise. Despite being one of the oldest mental institutions in this country, Long River Hospital wore its signs of age with grace. The paint on these walls seemed freshened up, and so did the countertops of the reception and the information desk. The majority of the doors seemed to be replaced with designs undoubtedly more modern than whatever it was in their place before. Even to the point of equipping those led to the more important offices with lit up informational plates. In general, the place seemed well put together as a facility, which Kai guess made it at least better than much, well that much better than the prison, realized Landon. Welcome, Mr. Nurse glanced briefly at a file he carried on top of a bunch of papers. Song Kai? You can call me uh, Chen. I am a nurse that will be taking care of you from now on. To make sure that we stay on good terms, you'll do well listening to my instructions. At all times. I mean, sure is bossy. Are we clear? Yeah, sure. The nurse glared at him pointedly. They clicked his tongue. I'll take you to your room now, so please make sure to follow and remember the way. It seemed like they were walking for several minutes, and Kai realized that he had failed to judge just how huge the building was from its exterior alone. The maze of corridors was never ending, narrowing and then opening into several huge passages, then narrowing again. It was mostly quiet, with a couple of staff members walking here and there, busy with their tasks, not paying them any attention. Nurse Chen explained that patients had to stay in their rooms at all times beside the leisure hours, which were from 1 to 4 p.m., and that hospital wasn't very crowded otherwise. 
like most hospitals, a long room where every nurse is designated to a couple of patients that we take care of daily. In my case, it is five patients total, including you and your roommate. Oh, roommate, okay. So I'll have a roommate? It's almost like a dorm, Kai thought to himself before an unexpected noise caught his attention. His gaze drifted toward the end of the corridor where an aggressive patient landed a punch on one of the nurses and got straight by two burly guards a second later. Crazy. Yes, the director said that you'll be placed in Mayu's room, thinking that some company will do him well. Most and Kai stared at his chin, clicked his tongue again, and raised his voice. I hope for your sake that you'll behave yourself. Mayu was a very good boy, and I wouldn't have anyone ruin all the hard work he had poured into making him better. The Long River was sectioned into two separate single sex wards, male and female. What Kai had been told, they were only adults. Good boy. What the heck would he call a grown-up man that? I could see you walking in silence after that exchange, and truthfully, Kyle was glad for a moment with a piece. He already disliked the tone of Chen's voice. We're here. This part of the hospital was different from what Kai had been so far. The rows of doors leading to what seemed like a number of small rooms. Not very inviting, if he was to be honest. The room was over there, to the left, number 57. Kai just nodded, even though the nurse was addressing him. It didn't really feel like the man was talking to him at all. His voice almost robotic, monotone and clearly a patient to be done with our tour. After a brief pause, he took a bunch of keys out of his pocket and slid one of them to the keyhole of room 57. As soon as the door opened, Kai was greeted with a sight of a bland room with not much color to it. Surely enough, it had two beds, although it was suspected that the staff placed a second one there recently. Small wardrobe and a few shelves. The precise schedule of your day is yet to be determined, but usually your medicine will be administered in the mornings and if needed in the evenings. Between therapy sessions, medical checkups, and other activities, there is general leisure time for every patient that starts at 1 p.m. Other than that, you'll be mostly here. In the far corner of the tiny room, sitting on his bed motionless, was a slender man that had to be Moyu. Kai didn't miss how the nurse's eyes rested on his roommate, even as Kai was the one he was talking to. Moyu didn't acknowledge either of them in any way. It was difficult to determine whether he was even aware that the door had opened and someone was in the room with him, staring at his lap without blinking, still like a statue. The nurse cleared his throat. Any questions? Who plans my day? I understand the schedule for each patient is uh, rigid. Who plans it? Since you don't have a lead psychiatrist appointed yet, yours was listed by the medical director himself. When therapy starts, your doctor may change your calendar accordingly. So I have no say in it. Nurse Chan gave Kai a strange look, ignoring the question. Seems like you're ready to settle in, as I said. I'll come by tomorrow morning. As much as sparing him another glance, the nurse closed the door shut, drowned the room in awful silence. Figured I'd be able to ask another question, but okay. That's it, huh? The longest I've still ever arrived from the police station, and there's nothing interesting in this room. Not even a book to read. I wonder what I should do now. Talk to. Blessing leaving Kai settled on the free bed, taking in his surroundings for a while, for refocusing his attention on Moyu. Hey? Nothing, not even the flare of those icky fan like eyelashes. As Kai was taking in his features, unbothered by the maid ignoring him, he couldn't help but notice that not only Moyu's voice was worth attention. Pretty. Okay. What was some of his looks doing in such a place? Not like looks alone or indication of anything, but still. Your name is Moyu, right? The room was so small and their beds were so close that it was impossible to not see just how big his eyes were. How shapely the slightly slanted slope of his nose. But what really stood out, at least to Kai, were the man's lips. Thick and pally and naturally tender red, like someone straight out of a movie or a lipstick commercial. 
Mother's really, really pretty man. Okay. He kept his hands in his lap neatly, fingers intertwined. Even though we see him relax on the surface, Kai could see the way his doubles paled. There's never even talking to him. I can take that. It's better to be in the room with a quiet guy than one who never stops talking. Kai thought as he lay down on the bed, closing his eyes. There was still another day to try a coaxing reaction from his reserved, shy roommate. Soon after the blissful concussion has um, washed over him. What did the psychiatrist say? You're not sick, are you? His own son, of course he's fine. He's not crazy. I'm sure it was all an unfortunate misunderstanding. The doctor confirmed it, yes. Kai, say something. Answer your mother's son. Like he was told yesterday, first thing in the morning, Kai was taken to an examination room to have his blood pressure, take layer of reflex, and visual acuity checked. He also does his chest x ray, take the blood, and here I sample. Crazy. But we'll save here. So, we go over the main menu. Well, let's see. Can we look at the credits? Game made by Adian Glare Studios. Game was funded by Amazing Supporters on Kickstarter. Here are all the credits for everything else, including the fonts. So, I'll leave it here, close to the main menu. Yes, this is Glass Hearts. Um, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. If y'all did, you know, of course, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, if you want to play this game for yourself, uh, you are free to do so. I will link it in the description. And, uh, yeah. Seems like very like well put together, like it's like a pretty much like I said earlier, like a movie. So, you know, I might play it in my free time, I might not, but like I said, if you want to play it, I'll link everything below. And uh, yeah, hope y'all have a nice day, and I'll see y'all in the next one.